The Holocaust Memorial Center was inaugurated on March 10, 2011, in memory of 7,144 Jews that were deported and killed in Treblinka. They represented 98% of the Jews that lived in Macedonia before the Second World War, which is the highest percentage in the history of the Holocaust. The Holocaust Memorial Center is located in the Skopje city center on the left bank of the river Vada in the old Jewish quarter. When the visitors enter the museum, they will encounter a sculpture of the desperate survivors holding framed photos of their loved ones. They seek to learn the fate of those lost. Some frames are empty and others hold mirrors so that visitors can envisage their own pictures held aloft by survivors. The visitors then enter a theater where an orientation film will serve as a prelude to the exhibition, much as the opening movement of a symphony sets forth its major themes. As visitors ascend the stairs from the orientation film to the first floor, they will experience a kaleidoscope of Jewish history from Abraham to contemporary times and thus enter the world of Jews in antiquity. The oldest known synagogue outside the land of Israel is located in the ancient city of Stobi. A replica of a pillar from the Stobi synagogue will be used as the centerpiece of an exhibit that will tell the Macedonian Jewish history. Part of the exhibition will be a large visual multimedia piece showing the tapestry of Spanish Jews' heritage and a life before the expulsion from Spain. It is a visual document of testimony. The Golden Age of Spain, the expulsion from Spain, the Ottoman Empire and the Ladino sections of the exhibition will represent the unique chapter in Jewish history. The exhibition deals with Spain because most of Macedonian Jews trace back their origin to the expulsion from Spain. Afterwards, they settled in the Ottoman Empire and spoke the Ladino language. The exhibition continues with the Jewish quarter of Skopje and the times when it was pulsating with Jewish life. The quarter's homes and marketplace, its synagogues and its schools will be represented so as to evoke a world that once was. The Jewish well-being declined in the interval period 1918-1941, when some anti-Semitic laws were enacted before the beginning of World War II. Jewish charities aided increasingly impoverished communities and Zionism became a major influence in the community. The annihilation of Macedonian Jews took place within the context of the Bulgarian occupation and the rise of Nazism. This part begins with a film on the rise of Nazism, depicting how the Nazi regime came to power, the beginning of World War II, the occupation of Macedonia and subsequently handing it over to Bulgaria. The visitors will encounter Jewish life under Bulgarian occupation and the restrictions that were imposed on the Jews. The law for protection of the nation was implemented, as were many other restrictions which were followed by the seemingly inevitable march towards destruction, the deportations from Bitola, Shtip and Skopje. A dramatic descent down the stairs takes visitors into an alcove which is narrow and tall and faces a deportation railroad car of the type used to deport the Jews from the monopole to Treblinka. The exhibition will depict the brief but horrific ghettoization in the monopole, the Skopje tobacco factory and the deportation of the Macedonian Jews to Treblinka from which no soul returned. After walking through the cattle car, visitors will enter an exhibition about the killing center of Treblinka. It will abound with artifacts, photographs, as well as a model of the camp. Leaving the Treblinka area, visitors will also encounter the other five killing facilities or factories of death. Auschwitz, Majdanek, Chelmno, Belzen and Sobibor, which together with Treblinka form the Aktion Reinhardt camps exclusively dedicated to the annihilation of the Jews. There were only two alternatives to Treblinka in Macedonia joining the resistance or escaping by hiding. The museum will tell the unique story of resistance in Yugoslavia, where the Jews were an integral and integrated part of the resistance movement. The museum will depict the role of Albania as a rescuer, the only European country that had more Jews at the end of the war than at its beginning. It will tell the story of Alexander and Blaga Todorov, who were honored by Yad Vashem as righteous among the nations. After the liberation, Many Jewish survivors feared to return to their former homes because of the anti-Semitism that persisted in parts of Europe and because of the trauma they had suffered. Some who returned home feared for their lives since there were few possibilities for emigration. As in many European countries whose Jewish population was annihilated, the communities of Vitor and Shtip have to struggle with the paradox of the post-Holocaust world the absence of presence and the presence of absence. Streets that were once filled with Jews are still there, yet the Jewish community is no longer there to tread them. Many Jews from Yugoslavia, stung by the destruction of their community and the loss of their families, chose to move to Israel, the Jewish homeland. 
There, a Macedonian diaspora community has emerged, maintaining some of the traditions and teachings of the old country and merging them with the practices and culture of the vibrant Jewish life in Israel. The concluding exhibition in the museum will describe the rebuilding of the Jewish community in Macedonia. And finally, visitors will watch a film describing the legacy of the Holocaust. This film sums up all that was experienced by the visitors and relates it directly to 21st century Macedonia and the Balkan region.